Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another session today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for calling us. And thank you for the privilege you have given us so that we can come together like this and be trained in your word by your spirit and for a greater work than we've done in the past. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you reveal your mind to us once again in Jesus' name. Amen. Strengthen your people. Amen. Energize us in the inner man. Amen. Empower us and send us forth for greater exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep us awake. Amen. Help us to hear everything you tell us like you want us to hear. Amen. It will do good in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. And I want to remind you that this is Deeper Life Weekly Training. By the way, as we talk about a training, many people do not understand. Maybe you are there. You don't understand what we call ourselves trainees. That is, we're here, we're being trained, trained to do something. So that by the grace of God, I'll be better today than I was yesterday. I'm talking about somebody there. Yeah. We'll be better today than we were yesterday in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sometimes some people ask me, or maybe they, if they had a chance, they would ask me, why do you break down this series, one, two, three, four, five, up to seven or eight? So that by the grace of God, we remember. And today, as we're talking about training, I want you to write the word training. You know the spelling. The T there is transformation from trivialities. You see, when we come for training, it's to transform us. It's to change us. It's to turn us around. And it's to make us leave trivialities alone. Things that are trivial. Things that are superficial. Things that are not important. And bring us to something concrete. Something steady. Something very important. T. We're trained so we can have transformation from trivialities. R. Is reawakening to responsibility. Here is duty. Here is responsibility. And the training is to wake us up and reawaken us again so that we'll know that we're to spend our lives for real responsibilities. A is advance in achievement. You see, if we're being trained and there is no advance and there's no increase and there's no progress, the training is not effective. But it is when we're advancing in our achievement. We know that we're really receiving the training. R, sorry, I increase in integrity. You see, if we're going to be dependable or trustworthy, there must be integrity. And it is as that integrity is increasing every time from the training, from the exposure we're being given, and there is increase in integrity. We know that training is taking effect. N, nurture of a nobody into nobility. Here you come, you had nothing, you knew nothing, and you possess nothing. Here you come, and before the time of the training, before you come into the institution for you to be trained, it's like you thought yourself a nobody, I'm weak, I cannot do anything, I cannot achieve anything, I cannot go in any direction that is going to be upward, and then training comes to you, and that training nurtures a nobody into nobility. And then I integration with uh, interns. When we talk of internship, it's like you've been taught in an institution. You have been taught in a college. You have been taught a particular trade. You've been taught a particular discipline. But now, the interns are the people that come for a kind of exposure in a, an institution where that work is being done. And training is to integrate us with those interns so that we go for internship. And now we're practicing what we actually ought to become. We're already practicing it. And then uh, the next end there is nourishment of the new nature. Nourishment of the new nature as we are getting trained. 
we're having the nature of Christ now is to reproduce himself in us. And because of that, we're nourishing that new nature. G there is growth in godliness. I will grow. You'll grow in Jesus' name. That means that we leave the lesser things and the past things and those unimportant things and now we're moving upward and we're growing. And I've, uh, as I've said that, uh, T, tell me what you have there. Transformation from trivialities. No, you need to look at your life. You need to look at your ministry. You need to look at your district. You need to look at your group, at your region, at your state. Have you been involved with trivialities? Things that are not very important. Things that whether they are or they are not, they are not going to make any difference. Trivialities. Are you being transformed from that? Are you coming out from that? Are you leaving all those things alone? You check up and then reawakening to responsibility. What's your responsibility? What's a great commission. What has the Lord called you to do? And are you are waking from, from day to day, from week to week, and you actually do You go through one by one, and then we have training. But now, it is one thing to know the end product, but we need to know from this point on to that point, which is the end product, how do I get there? How about the training itself? What's the system for the training, the process for the training? And what are the items we have in the training? You see, there are people that will just read the Bible, and then after reading the Bible, it is something they read in the Bible, uh, whether it is their pastors or their overseers or their evangelists or whatever, they get the same thing every time. It shouldn't be like that. You see, when we read the Bible, if you come as a father and you want to look at your responsibility, as a father, you go to the Bible, there's something you're going to see there. When you come as an evangelist, you want to see something in the Bible, as an evangelist, there's something you'll see there. And when you come as a pastor, as a shepherd, there's something you'll see there. When you come as uh, maybe a teacher of the word, there's something you're going to see there. It may be the same person, but we're leading you to become a pastor, we're leading you to become an evangelist, we're leading you to become a particular kind of worker. So, what's the process? of the training. We're going to use that word training again. T, we teach and we test. You see, when we say we're training people, we're teaching them, we're testing them. If we're teaching them alone, you're not training them. But as you teach them, you test them. What has he got? What has he known? What can he practice? What can he do? What can he achieve? You are, te you are teaching, you are testing. The next letter there is to reform for revival. Reform for revival. You see, you want to renew the person. His perception is renewed. His understanding is renewed. His thirst, his passion for the Lord is renewed. There is renewal. There is revival. There is reform. And then A, admonition and attention. Admonition and attention. What does that mean? Admonition means, you know, exhortation. We're giving the word out. We're giving the message out. That's admonition to everybody. Now we pay particular attention to each person. Now we're training them. Because the general knowledge we give, the general teaching we give, the general doctrine we give, uh, that's admonition. But now we come to you in particular, and we're looking at your district. We're looking at your group. We're paying attention to you, and we're paying attention to everything you're doing uh, and how you are doing it, admonition and attention. I there is illustration and impartation. I, illustration and impartation. It is not, you know, text all the time. It is not a passage of, yes, we read the passage, but then we make illustrations on the passage, examples that we can give, a pattern that we can give, and something from history we can give, something from other people on the field who are doing it, we make illustration, and then we impart something into your life. That's the impartation today. You are not going to be the same again in Jesus' name. Illustration and impartation. And look at this one. Negation and neutralization. 
You see, before people come for training, they have some pre uh, preconceived ideas. They have some things in their system, and they have some things that will be a setback for them. And you need to negate all those things. You negate them. You say, no, that cannot be right. Then he comes to realize that, okay, I've been carrying some ideas that are not all right. I've been carrying some ideologies that are not all right. Negation and neutralization. It's like, uh, you know, somebody has something that is negative. You neutralize that. Because now he has an open slate, a clean state. You've neutralized all those negative things that he had before. You can write something now on that clean slate. Negation and neutralization. Actually, we do that even for, you know, people who are just born again. They're coming from that area. They're coming from that area. And they have some superstitions in them. They have some syncretic ideas in them. They had some traditional ideas in them. You negate those things. You cancel those things. And then you neutralize all those things. Now you are ready to plant something positive and something dynamic in their lives. And then you have eye illumination and inspiration. Illumination. When you come for training, you say, have you seen that before? I didn't know that before. I've read that passage before. I didn't see that. No. Light is shining on that passage you are reading. And then your responsibility, your action, the things you have to do. There is illumination. And then there's inspiration. You feel inspired. You say, release me and let me go now. I want to go and get something done. You are inspired today and you go out to do something in Jesus' name. And then the end there is needs and necessities. Needs and necessities. You see, as we come for training, you, know, you begin to see the need in that community, the need in that village, and the need in that town, and the need in that place. Needs and necessities. And those necessities drive you to action. Those necessities, they drive you to the work that you ought to do. And G, guide guidance and grooming guidance and grooming while you are doing the work you might make some mistakes while you are doing the work you might uh, do it in a way that is not totally effective and then we guide you that's part of the training we groom you that's part of the training and when you are guided and you are groomed then uh, you are going to achieve more i see achievers there tonight i said i see achievers there tonight but they have to recognize themselves, they're achievers, and they have to indicate, yes, I'm an achiever. I said, I'm an achiever. You'll be an achiever in Jesus' name. Now, if that is training, what part of training are we looking at today? I'm looking at uh, the message today. Seven habits of great achievers for God. Seven habits of great achievers for God. I'm coming to Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way, tell me, prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. A whole batch, that's one of the habits you need to deliver, you need to develop. I'll talk about that later. I'm looking at Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse, 20, verse 15 and verse 23. In verse 15, as the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua, and so did Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. Look at verse 23. So Joshua took the whole land. I said Joshua took the whole land. Any Joshua there today? You take this whole land. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses. And Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to the divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war. 
chapter 13 of Joshua. Joshua chapter 13, uh, we're looking at the steps it takes. We're looking at, you know, the process it took for Joshua from this to this to this. And then we have these uh, seven habits we need to develop so that by the grace of God, we're going to become greater achievers. We're going to become happier achievers in Jesus' name. We're looking at chapter 13, verse 1. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, the Lord said unto him, it's like the Lord had been monitoring the work. Of course, he always did. It's like the Lord has been saying, Joshua, that's good, that's good. Move on, move on, keep on going on. And at this time now, he said, the Lord said, thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Uh, by the way, he's not replacing him. By the way, he's not saying, okay, you are old now. Can you come aside and let me choose another person? All those people are still going to do their work. While I'm doing my own work, you'll be doing your own work. Yeah. And your work and my work will complement each other. And they will move the church to the next level in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's not talking about Joshua. Now you are old, step aside. Now you are old, forget about working out. Now you are old, retire. Have you noticed there's no retirement in the Bible uh, for the servants of God? Did you notice that before? Oh, you didn't notice that. I said you didn't notice that. Moses, did he retire? I about Joshua, did he retire? I'm thinking about Paul now, did he retire? I about, um, you know, Samuel, did he retire? No, he didn't retire, and uh, you will not be tired. Amen. Neither will you retire. Amen. If somebody older than you is still moving on, somebody standing here, I think maybe some people there might be a little bit older than myself, but I think I'm older than the person I'm sitting in front there. Where are you? If I'm older than you are, where are you there? If I'm not retired, are you tired? No. I used to say, I will not retire, but I will refire. <laughs> say it for yourself. I will not retire, but I will the Lord will confirm it in your life. Yeah. And so the Lord said, there's still much land to possess. We're looking at uh, chapter 14. In chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I, was, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Look at verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. That's Caleb. The spirit of Caleb will come in your heart. And then it says, and Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever. Because, because, because thou hast and thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. It will keep you alive. For he, as he has said, these 40 years and five, these 40 and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day, how old? First call and five years old in a normal figure. What does that mean? 85 years old as yet. I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. No rheumatism. Amen. No backache. Amen. No cancer. Amen. No ulcer. Amen. No dimness of sight. Amen. Where did I put my Bible? And the Bible is there. You will find your Bible. Amen. And the Lord will keep you strong and healthy in Jesus' name. As yet I'm as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Verse 12, now therefore, say it aloud. Are you afraid? Are you backing out? No. Are you stopping? No. Now therefore give me this mountain. 
those are the people that are cheap for God. The people that, and yes, I know it's difficult. Yes, I know it's a challenge. I know there's a mountain there, but I'm as strong today as I was five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, forty years ago. Give me this mountain, you will conquer. We're looking at chapter 18 and I'm looking at verse 3. Chapter 18, we're looking at verse 3. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 43. Joshua chapter 21, and we're reading from verse 43. In verse 43, and the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give to their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he swore unto their fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. Amen. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. In your life, all those promises will come to pass. All those expectations will come to pass. And all your desires, they'll come to pass in Jesus' name. Chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 29. Chapter 24, we're reading from verse 29. In verse 29, here is what it says. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, died being, tell me, an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnasera, which is in Mount Ephraim on the north side of the hill Geash. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. Your converts will serve the Lord. You will not lose your converts. The church will grow under your leadership. And as you preach, and as you minister, and as you lead, more will come into the kingdom in Jesus' name. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that overlaid Joshua, which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. Looking at that uh, verse uh, 31, look at that again. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. Was Joshua successful? Yes. I will see a great achiever. Yes. The question is, if he was that a, 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 an achiever, what were the principles? What were the things we can tell that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven habits of great achievers for God? That's why we're now coming to chapter one. And I'm dividing this message to three parts. Number one, seven habits of successful workers. Seven habits of successful workers. Point number two. Sanctified hearts without secret weakness. Sanctified hearts without secret weakness. Number three, separated harvesters for set weeks. Separated harvesters for set weeks. We're coming to number one. What's number one there? Seven habits of successful workers. We're coming to Joshua chapter 1. We want to understand that a habit is a settled pattern of behavior. After repeated deliberate acts or actions. You take an action now. 
that's not habit yet. It's a good thing. It's a good event. It's a good action. But you repeat that action deliberately. You repeat that action deliberately. You repeat it deliberately until it becomes part of your nature, part of your system, and part of your reflex action that now is become a habit and you do it now with ease. That's what you are talking about. All these seven things we're looking at, you're doing them. You're doing them. At the first time, it may look awkward. At the first time, it may look difficult. At the first time, it may look like, can I really do this? But you keep on and keep on and keep on. And uh, you do it. And you find that by the grace of God, these seven habits will come into your life. And then you are going to be an achiever, a great achiever in Jesus' name. Not just a moderate achiever, not just uh, an ordinary achiever, not an, uh, a superficial achiever, but you'll be going from strength to strength and from power to power, and then greater and greater achievements will be in your life, and they depend upon these seven habits we're talking about, the seven habits of successful workers. We're coming to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of non Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. The first habit is accept great privileges from God. Don't dodge. Accept great privileges from God. Who is going to get into Moses' shoes? This is awesome. This is difficult. This is going to be a great work. How could God call me to step into Moses' shoes? Because we know the stature of Moses in the Old Testament. And all those uh, children of Israel fighting against Moses, grumbling against Moses, and then Moses was able to wait through and eventually died at the age of 120. And now God is calling me and God is saying, step into those shoes. Because now you are to fulfill the final prophecy concerning the children of Israel. And Joshua didn't say, I cannot. I know that Shinobosis was a special person, and because he was special, he was able to do that. And the very first thing you notice in your life, if you're going to be a great achiever, number one, accept great privileges from God. I'm looking at uh, Jonah. Jonah chapter, chapter 3. In Jonah chapter 3, you have to accept this. The Lord is saying, this burden is coming upon you. And this privilege is coming right on your shoulders. And then you have to accept, you have to accept great responsibilities and privileges from God. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 2, it says, Arise and go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Great responsibility. He was running away from it before because he knew that that was great. How could I do that all alone by myself? Eventually accepted. Now we're coming back to Joshua chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Joshua chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses. Look at verse 4. From the wilderness or, and this uh, Lebanon. Even unto the great river. The river Euphrates. All the land of the Hittites. And unto the great sea. Toward the going down of the sun. Shall be thy coast. Be. Believe great promises from God. Believe great promises from God. The Lord called him and he accepted. After he accepted, then the Lord said, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. 
Did you ever think about that? Just walk through and you possess. Just get there and you possess. Just walk around and the Jericho walls will fall down because it depends on how many places you're able to get to. Because every place, the soul of your foot shall tread upon, I've given that unto you. Can I get to that village? It's in your hand. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. Can I get to that local government? Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. Can I get to that locality and community? Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you the habit of great achievers is that be they believe great promises from God. A accept great privileges from God. B believe great promises from God. We're coming to chapter one verse five. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee. I thought uh, our people will say Amen. There shall not any man think about that. Uh, don't, don't talk about, you know, they have occultic power, any man. Don't talk about the, you know, the wicked people, any man. Don't talk about the fact that they run down that person, they crush that person, they conquer that person, they run that person out of town. They make that person backslide, but not you. I said not you. Look at this. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses when was before Pharaoh and before the magicians and before the Red Sea. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto these people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I, have, which I swear unto their fathers. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. See, consecrate great potentials to God. Consecrate great potentials to God. You see, all the land was there. And then the Lord was telling him, Joshua, I know how old you are because you're just like Caleb. Your colleague Caleb is already about 80 years of age because later I became 85. He's already about 80 years of age. I know that, you know, even though you are this age, I know your potentials. I know your power. I know your strength. I know your ability. I know your vision. Now you consecrate all those things to God so that you can rise up and no man shall be able to stand before you. Occultic powers will not stand before you. Evil powers will not stand before you. Consecrate great potentials to God. I'm looking at uh, the next one now. This is uh, from verse uh, 7. Second part of verse 7. It says, Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou Thou goest. During the week, you'll prosper. Yeah. At the weekend, you'll prosper. Yeah. On Sunday, you'll prosper. Yeah. In the market, you'll prosper. Yeah. In the ministry, you'll prosper. Yeah. In your family, you'll prosper. Yeah. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all, according to all, according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Declare great proclamations from God. Declare great proclamations from God. This book of the Lord will be in your mouth. And as it, as it is in your mouth, you preach it. You declare it. Yes, you're observing it. Yes, you're being it. Yes, you're standing by it. And you're walking according to that word. But not only that, you're also proclaiming it and preaching it and declaring, spreading it everywhere. In First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Here we're reading from verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly, entirely completely, absolutely, to them that thou may, that thy prophet may appear unto all. I will see your prophet in the world. 
your family will see your profit in the world. Your neighbors will see your profit in the world. That profit in me appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Those who are hearing you will not be lost. And those who listen to you from week to week in your local church, in your district, in your group, in your uh, region, in your state, or anywhere you are leading, in your nation, those who are listening to you, they will be saved. They will be secured. And they remain firm in the court of the Lord in Jesus' name. Declare great proclamations from God. We we'll come back to Joshua chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 9. Joshua chapter 1, we're reading from verse 9. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Praise the Lord. His power will be with you. His presence will be with you. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals. Uh, for with these three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Exercise great promptness for God. Exercise great promptness for God. God had just told him now, and he just told him, every place the soul of a foot shall tread upon, I've given it to you. He has just told him, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, move on, and anywhere you go, you're going to possess the land. This word will not depart out of your mouth. Immediately God finished with him, he faced the people, he said, get ready, prepare promptness exercise great promptness for god you see the problem of people they come to our saturday training session and then of everything they've heard they feel challenged they feel inspired they feel uh, revived and then uh, they go back home uh, and they go to rest we don't do that you do it promptly look at psalm 119 psalm 119 uh, we're reading here from verse 16 psalm 119 uh, we're reading from verse 16 exercise great promptness for God. In Psalm 119 verse 16, here is what it says, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. I made haste, I hurried up, and immediately I just forged ahead to keep your commandment. We're coming back to chapter 1 of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 1 verse 12. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh speak, Joshua seen, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God has given you rest, and has given you this land. Your wives, and your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan, but ye shall pass um, you shall pass before your brethren arms, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Verse 15, uh, tell me the first word there. Tell me out loud. You know what Joshua is saying? Joshua is saying, now get up, you are going to join your people, and you are going to get to the land, and you are going to keep on with them. Then it says, until until you see there are people they don't keep on walking until they don't keep on serving until they don't keep on preaching until they don't keep on laboring until until they see the final end they, they just you know i think i've done enough you've not done enough until we finish the work you'll stay there until we finish 
We'll keep on doing it until we finish. There are times, there are times when the heel will be very high. There are times when the body will be very low. There are times when there may be sometimes a time of dreariness, a time of weakness, a time of weariness, and a time of hunger and thirst. But until, somebody give me the word until. Until, look at verse 15. Until the Lord has given you, your brethren, rest. As he has given you, and they also are possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. The land of your, uh, it says, uh, then shall you return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it. You'll enjoy your possession. You'll enjoy your family. You'll enjoy your work and enjoy it which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side, Jordan, to watch the sun rising. Number six, finish great projects for God. Finish great projects for God. You develop that into a habit that you are not, you know, starting and stopping. Ah. Great achievers don't do that. Great achievers make sure that we start this, we go on, and we finish great projects for God. Thank God you are finished. Amen. Nothing will stop you. Amen. Nothing will cease the work from you. Amen. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. And I'm reading here from verse 24. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. It says, but none of these things move me. If you are going to finish, rainy season will not move you. Amen. Dry season will not move you. Uh, you know, the complaints of people will not stop you. Nothing will stop you in Jesus' name. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might you're not there. So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Finish great projects for God. Now we're looking at Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 16. Joshua chapter 1. We're looking at verse 16. And the answer Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. That's a great team. I said that's a great team. A team that says we're all united together. We're one together. We're moving on together. We're going to achieve together. Where you send us, we will go. Where you transfer us, we will go. Where you place us, we will go. I can't hear my people. Yeah. You will go in Jesus' name. Yeah. Missions work, you will do it. Yeah. And the home uh, missions over here, you will do it. Yeah. Anywhere and everywhere, he says, Whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses, all the, in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever, whosoever he be that does not, that does rebel against thy commandment, well, well, and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, him shall be poor, he shall be put to death, only be thou strong, only be strong and of a good courage. Seven, gather great people for God. People who are great in their passion. People who are great in their vision. People who are great in their consecration. Gather great people for God. Those seven habits, you've seen them, they're actually A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And actually in music, all the beautiful music you hear, they're all based on those keys, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then you have semitone and all that, but the major tones and the major notes are just those seven. And if you develop these uh, seven A to G, you cannot fall. Amen. You cannot fail. Amen. And this work will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's recap. Let's, uh, you know, review before I go to point number two. A, tell me. Accept great privileges from God. B, tell me. 
believe great promises from God. See, tell me. Consecrate great potentials to God. D, what is it? Declare great proclamations from God. E, exercise great promptness for God. F, finish great projects for God. And G, gather great people for God. Let that become habit in your life. You go through one by one from A to G and say, no, I'm at this one. I will not give up. I will not let go. This one, I will finish this one. I said, I will finish this one. I said, I will finish this one. And then you'll be going from strength to strength. And now we come to point number two, sanctified hearts without secret weakness. We're coming to Joshua chapter 3. In Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, we're looking at verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, what's the verse here? And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Let me read that again and see whether that penetrates your heart. Whether you are the person God is talking about. That your ministry, great wonders tomorrow. Yeah. Your family, great wonders tomorrow. Yeah. In all the work of your hand that God has called you to, He said, go possess the land. And as you rise up and you are going to possess the land, wonders will never stop in your life. Yeah. Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. For tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. Yeah. Sanctified hearts without secret weakness. Let me remind you that the older generation who failed to achieve great success of entering in and possessing the promised land, you know what they had? They had number one, secret weakness. They were weak. They were weak. Every time they were complaining, Moses, what have we done? You brought us here, and how are we going to move on now? Look at all these people that surround us. And then with the news we heard from the land of Canaan, there are giants in the land, and we are like grasshoppers. Don't allow any secret weakness. Not even something in your heart that you are not seeing there as if I cannot, as if how can I make it, as if I'm weak, no secret weakness in Jesus' name. They had wilderness weariness, wilderness weariness. And they must have understood it wasn't to let them go through the wilderness, but they allowed the wilderness to make them weary. And then it says because of the journey, they were discouraged. And then they began to speak against Moses. Why have you brought us out? Why this and why that? That's what hindered them. Number three, uncircumcised hearts. Uncircumcised hearts. Even though they came out of Egypt, Egypt had not come out of them and they were still full of the desires of Egypt and they had uncircumcised hearts they had unbridled tongues anything they wanted to say they just said it might land them into trouble but they just said it and it might make God to be angry with them but they just said it and it might bring a sickness or plague on them but they still said it anyhow on bridled tongues we're not going to allow that because we have a great work in our hands and we are a great uh, pursuit that we are pursuing. And then number five, Egyptian lost. Egyptian lost. They will always remember the things we ate in uh, Egypt. And they were telling themselves, do you like this food? Do you like this manna? Do you like this uh, angel's food? We remember the onion and the cucumbers we ate in Egypt. Who is going to give us the food of Egypt to eat again? Egyptian loss was always in them. But if you will do something and say, all this remembrance of Egypt, I cut off from today. You wipe out from your life. They will never come back in Jesus' name. And then they add unsanctified desires. Unsanctified desires. Desires that they had in them that made them to be crying. How are we going to have that? How are we going to have this other one? Number seven, they had worldly attitude. 
Do you know they never said thank you to God? They never said, oh God, wonderful. Look at the water out of the rock. And look at the manna that came from heaven. And look at how God divided the Red Sea. And look at this and look at that. God, we thank you and praise you and worship. What a wonderful God you are. No, they won't do that because they had worldly attitude. Then they had unsubdued pride. Unsubdued pride. Is it only Moses that God is talking to? Is he not talking to us also? What can Moses do that we cannot do? And why is he to adjust like this? And you make yourself Lord and leader over everybody. Now Moses gets out to him. Moses said, Korah, Dathan, Abiram, what am I hearing? Come, go tell him we're not coming. You see, that kind of uh, pride, which is uh, unsubdued uh, pride, will make a person to fail. But I'm not looking at failures tonight. I'm looking at achievers tonight in Jesus' name. Uncontrollable appetite. They got this, they wanted another thing. They got this, they wanted another thing. There are people like that, they have uncontrollable appetite. Other people, untouched depravity. The depravity in them had not been tamed, had not been touched, had not been cleansed, had not been taken away from them. They had unbelief. Actually, the Bible says because of that unbelief, they were not able to enter into the land of Canaan. Then they had an unbroken will, a will that was so strong an unbroken will in them. All that bent to perpetually uh, go towards Egypt, all those things hindered them. Do you see the same trait in you at all? And do you hope to enter and possess the kingdom and achieve great things for God? Be sanctified. I said be sanctified. And develop. You see, when we get sanctified, sanctification alone will not occupy the land. Sanctification alone will not possess the land. Yes, sanctification is very important. Holiness is very important. But holiness and sanctification alone, without these seven habits, will not do anything at all. But thank God, as you are sanctified, and as you are cleansed, as you are poured, you come back to the seven habits. I'm coming back to them now. I'm coming back to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, and I'm reading again from verse 1. Joshua chapter 1, we're reading from verse 1. Are you there? It says, now, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, tell me the word there. Arise, go over this Jordan, thou, and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even the land of even the children of Israel. A, arise with God's people and go up. Arise with God's people and go up. Everybody is up and doing. Everybody is evangelizing. This is not the time for you to sit back. Arise with God's people and go up. Everybody is taking their own part, their own portion of the work. And they're doing, you know, they're, they're training people, they're evangelizing people, discipling people, they're baptizing converts. And then you are there. No, you cannot be like that. Arise with God's people and go up. Look at verse 3. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. It says, That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness to this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Behold the great places and go there. Behold the great places and go there. He said, Joshua, don't close your eyes, open your eyes and look from this Lebanon and then from the world to Lebanon and then the river Euphrates and the Hittites and the great sea everywhere. Keep going every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. I've given unto you A, arise with God's people and go up. B, behold the great places and go there. 
Uh, many people, they don't know beyond their locality. And then from their house, they come to church. From church, they go back to their houses, move around, go around, and trudge everywhere, and see that community is starting there, that village is springing up there, and that local government, look at the facilities they have, and look at the people that are coming from other places, they are coming to that community, arise, and go with God's people, behold the great places, and go there. I come to chapter 1, verse 5. In chapter 1, verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. While you are young now, nobody will stand before you. And five years to come, if Jesus there is, nobody will stand before you. And while you are getting older, and they think that you know you are older now, and the older you are, the weaker you are, they don't understand. No man shall be able to stand before you. In fact, the older you become, the more powerful you become. The stronger you become. And the more visionary you become, in Jesus' name. There shall no man, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee, I will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee, see, confront great principalities and powers and go through. Confront great principalities and powers. That's why it says, yes, the principalities and powers. But it says, no man with all their principalities, all their powers, they will not stand before you in Jesus' name. Confront great personalities and powers and go through. I'm going through. I said, I'm going through. I said, I'm going through. You know, some people, they want to start a journey. And you stand up there, then you look at your front, and then you see somebody, it's like a pharaoh, it's like a Nebuchadnezzar, it's like a Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. And they say, maybe I will, I will try tomorrow. Looks like today, Nebuchadnezzar is in the way. Come on now, rise up and keep on moving. He cannot stand before you. Why you are far away and you are standing here and I see you so bad there. He looked big, but when you keep on moving, I'll keep on moving. I said I'll keep on moving. All their powers, everything will come down in Jesus' name. How confident are you today that when God sends you forth, you can confront all those principalities and powers and thank God they will fall, you'll keep on standing. I'm coming now to chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Number, that is D here now. Dear, great possibilities for God and go over. You have to be courageous. You have to be bold. There is, there is no chance for a weakling in the field of evangelism. You have to dare. Dare great possibilities for God and go over. Thank God you will go over. And then we come to the latter part of verse 7. It says, Turn not from each to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. You will prosper. Whithersoever thou goest. But you know, it says, Don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. Set your face like a flint. This is where you are going. Don't let the rumbling and don't let the noise of what you are hearing make you to say, looks like there's no way there. There's a way there. I said, where well, there's a will, there's a way. And the Lord said, I will never leave you. I will never, I will never forsake you. And so you keep on going, you keep on going. But you say, that thing is standing there. When you get there, that thing will move. That thing will vanish away. You think you're seeing a personality there. Sometimes your imagination will paint a great big picture that will th threaten you. But as you keep on moving, I'll keep on moving. I said as you keep on moving, I will keep on moving. When you get there, that thing will vanish away. You dare great possibilities for God and go over. You execute great plans for God and you go on. 
Execute great plans for God and go on. That's it. Execute great plans for God and go on. We're looking at verse 18. Verse 18 it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How often do you meditate on the word of God? I said, How often do you meditate on the word of God? Look up here, look up here. You know, sometimes you hear that somebody is right there in that place where you are ministering. And the people, they have planted something there. Something happened many centuries ago that those people, they buried something there. And they have said, anybody that goes against their idol, that person will die. And that no gospel church will prosper there. While you are meditating on that, you are paralyzed. You are weakened. You are meditating on hearsay. You are meditating on tradition. You are meditating on history. You are meditating on story, story, story. But now it says, abandon all those stories. Abandon the superstition. And come back to this word. Even if it's this, the only word you know, no man shall be able to stand before me. No man shall be able to stand before me. You are meditating on that. You are med oh, yet you analyze, what does that mean, no man? What does that mean? No occultic man. What does that mean? No superstitious man. What does that mean? No idolatrous man. What does that mean? No political man. What a, no thought. Nobody shall be able to stand before me. You meditate on that day and night. Day and night. Meditation will make you strong. And you'll be so strong that you will confront anything and everything. And you will focus on great pronouncements from God. And you go for the goal. You focus on great pronouncements. Look at the pronouncements of the Lord in the word of God. And it says that what shall not depart out of your mouth. You meditate on it day, day and night. Thank God I see successful people here today. I come now to verse 9. In verse 9 it says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest look up here you know sometimes you are going on a journey and then hurriedly you park your load and then as you get to the place you are going you open your suitcase what is this thing what is this thing i forgot this i forgot this what am i going to do now because I cannot do anything successful. I cannot do anything confidently without that sin. How could I forget that? Ah, this journey is useless. And this work I've come to do here, what can I do now? What can I amount to? Because I forgot that sin. Hold on. He says, anywhere you go, as you go like that, didn't you see that place? He says, for the Lord thy God. Tell me. Ah, uh, you, you missed it. The latter part of verse 9. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. That thing you forgot, you didn't take along with you, God is greater than that thing. If God is with you, thank God you are going to succeed. Because we're not, we're talking about go with great passion with God and grow. Go with great passion with God and grow. Let's review those seven things now in point number two. Seven things. We're looking at number one. What's that? Arise. Arise with God's people and go up. Don't go down. Don't go back. Go up. I will not go back. I'll go up. I'll not go down. I'll go up. Be, tell me, be there. They behold the great places and don't go to little places. Don't go to where there's no challenge. Don't go to places where there's nothing to do. Everybody in the majority that place, everything is already done. Behold great places and go there. See, tell me. Confront great principalities and powers and go through. Thank God you can confront them. 
How do you confront them? It doesn't mean that you go on challenging everybody. Hey, they say you have evil power. They say you have occultic power. Not at all. Let me remind you. The ark of the covenant of the children of Israel was taken by those uh, people and they took it to the shrine of Ashdod. And as they took to the, Ash, uh, the, uh, the uh, shrine of Dagon, then Dagon was there and uh, the ark was there. Any priest there? Any shouting there? Any speaking in tongues there? Just the quiet presence of that ark, the following morning, they gone a falling down. And then they came, they were surprised. How could this happen? There's an invisible hand. There's an invisible power. And every Dagon will fall before you in Jesus' name. And then, then they brought Dagon up again, and that quietly was just there. The presence of Christ in you. The power of Christ in you. The power of the Holy Ghost in you. Whether uh, confronting them doesn't mean you are going to fight with them. Just being there and then reciting, uh, you know, the promises of God in your heart. Those people, they'll collapse in Jesus' name. And so you confront great principalities and powers and you go through. Now, uh, D, tell me D there. Dear great possibilities for God and go over. If you never dare anything, you'll not know what success is. If you never attempt anything difficult, anything challenging, you'll not know what success is. Then uh, what's E there? Execute great plans for God and go on. What's the F? Focus on great pronouncements from God and go for the goal. And G go with great passion. Be enthusiastic. Be enthusiastic. If you're going to do anything, let enthusiasm come from you and let joy, excitement come from you that, you know, you are going and you are singing, you are going and you are happy, you are going and you are buoyant, you are going and you are powerful. Let there be enthusiasm. Go with great passion with God and you will grow. I come to point number three now. Point number three, separated abestas, separated abestas, for such weeks. Separated abestas for such weeks. I'm coming to Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 5. What verse is that? Look at this. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God which giveth us the rain both the former and the latter in a season and he has reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest he has reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest he's talking about people here who are harvesters they are separated to that work and they are abandoned to that work they are dedicated to that work they are consecrated to that work and has given us the appointed weeks of the harvest let me first of all talk about the separation we are coming to Leviticus chapter 20 Leviticus chapter 20 separated harvesters you know you are set apart for this you know you are separated for this it says in chapter 20 of Leviticus reading from verse 20 it says, but I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give each unto you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. We are not like them. We don't talk like them. We don't think like them. And we're not discouraged like them. We're not easily beating off the track like them. Because we have the Holy One, the ancient of this, abiding with us. Look at verse 25. He shall therefore put a difference between the clean bees and uncleaner, and between unclean fowls and cleaner. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by the by by the bees, or by fowl, or by any manner of living sin that creepeth upon the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. He has separated us from everything that's unclean, will remain separated in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20, it says, And ye shall be holy unto me. Ye shall be holy unto me. There's no room for sin in our lives. 
There's no room for backsliding in our lives. There's no room for defilement in our lives. We remain holy all through the days of our lives in Jesus' name. He shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy. And I've severed you, I've separated you from all the people that ye should be mine. We're separated. Not only separated at the point of salvation, we're separated for the service of the Lord. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, and we're reading from verse 2. In Acts chapter 13 verse 2, it says, As the ministers to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Tell me, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Separate unto me. Separate unto me. The Holy Ghost says, Separate unto me, eh, Barnabas and Saul, for the work that I have called them to. Separated harvesters. Harvesters. Who are the harvesters? We're looking at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 35. Matthew chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 35. It says in verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing everywhere. That's what you will do. And every disease, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then says he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are you. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. The laborers who are the reapers, those are the harvesters. It tells us in the word of God in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 35. John chapter 4 verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months. And it comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. That's why he has separated us to the work of harvesting, bringing souls into the kingdom of God. And now the set weeks. I want you to come back to that Jeremiah again. And we're looking at chapter 5, verse 24, Jeremiah. Chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 24 here. Neither say they in their heart. This was their uh, problem. This was the controversy God had with them because they were not looking at the work he has assigned for them. Neither say they in their hearts. Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season and reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. The appointed weeks of the harvest is just a kind of the, you know, the appointed period of the harvest. Harvesters and workers and preachers and evangelists, indeed all ministers should keep the seven habits of great achievers for God in mind. Go over them again. We're coming back to Joshua. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, here we're reading verses 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 1 and 2. The seven habits of great achievers for God. Joshua chapter 1, verses, verses what? 1 and 2. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, and thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children 
of Israel. One, acknowledge the absorbing assignment. This is not an assignment you can do and then still have other things. This one is absorbing. It will take your time. It will take your talent. It will take your skill. It will take your power. It will take your waking thoughts. It will take your sleeping thoughts. It will take your dream. It will take your desires. It will take everything from you to get the land, the land of Canaan for the children of Israel is an absorbing assignment. Acknowledge the absorbing assignment. I'm coming to point number two. In point number two, every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now keep on walking, Joshua. Keep on walking, Joshua. And you are walking forward. You're not going back to the wilderness. All that is gone. You're not going back to those Amalekites in Exodus chapter 17. All that is gone. You're not going back even to the borders or to the rim or to the shore of the Red Sea. The passes gone. Be born the bridge behind you. Born the bridge behind you. Behold the business before you. Behold the business before you and burn the bridge behind you. Everything of the past, forget all about that. You're not going back to wilderness again. You're not going back to the old life again. You're not going back to old journey again in verse 4 from the wilderness. And this Lebanon, it says, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hebites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be be your cause. And Joshua, lift, lift up your eyes and behold the business before you. I'm coming to number three now. And there you find in verse five, look at verse five. It says, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee. All the days of thy life. Joshua, uh, what have your eyes seen? You know, sometimes experience wicked people. I just, they say experience is the best teacher. Well, sometimes, sometimes. But you know, when you've confronted the Amalekites, and then only when Moses was lifting up the hand, you were succeeding. But now Moses is gone. Moses is gone. And Aaron is gone. And all, they are all gone. And there you are now. And the people were talking about you were one of the spies who saw those giants when you went with them. And that's why the ten spies said, we cannot go in because the giants in the land. You are going to not meet those giants face to face confrontational and here it says but thank God, thank God, thank God there shall not any man be able to stand before me all the days of my life as he was with Moses so he will be with me he will never fail me he will never forsake me see, conquer, cowardice and compromise within you conquer, cowardice and compromise within you the enemy within is stronger than the enemy without. The enemy is outside. They can't do anything. Already they are conquered. Calvary has conquered them. The blood of Jesus has wiped out their remembrance. Because, you know, if you are not strong today, it is not because of them outside. It is what is inside you. And the Lord is saying, conquer, cowardice, and compromise within you. Once it is not there, and you tell yourself, you speak to your soul. David was talking to him, said, My soul, why art thou cast down? My soul, why are you afraid? My soul, what are you thinking about meditating on that is making you to stoop down? Rise up, you will rise up. Uh, the, first, the first person to preach to is yourself. And the first person to pray for is yourself. And the first person to conquer is yourself. You conquer the cowardice and the compromise within you. And thank God you are moving on. I'm reading now from uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. It says, be strong. Somebody there, be strong. Yes. Somebody there, I said, be strong. Yes. And of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give, to, to give them. Only be thou strong, only be thou strong, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law that Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from me to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper, that thou mayest prosper if you turn, you're losing prosperity, that thou mayest prosper if you cringe, you're losing prosperity, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest, for demonstrate 
determination, dominion, and dedication to duty. Demonstrate. Demonstrate it. Be strong. And then if you say you are strong, then get up and go and walk. And be very courageous. If you say you are courageous, rise up and go and occupy the land. Demonstrate determination, dominion, and dedication to duty. We're looking at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, this book of the law. There's only one book. This book of the law. There's only one powerful book. This book of the law. There's only my, one mighty book that will suppress and conquer every other material in any other book. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein at day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then, for then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, your will prosper. Who says you are going to remain as you are? No, you are not going to remain as you are. It says that thou mayest prosper, and then thou shalt have good success. Embrace this explicit word in its entirety. Embrace, embrace, embrace his explicit word in its entirety. I'm coming now to verse 9. In verse 9 it says, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong, and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Follow through with faith till final fulfillment. Follow through. Hey, that's how we succeed. Those are the keys for us to succeed. That you get something started. Whatever it is that the Lord has called you to, you follow through with faith till final fulfillment. And then I come to verse 16. In verse 16, and they answer Joshua saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. Somebody there, we will do. You'll be an active worker, mighty worker, a powerful worker, a worker that is going on and moving on. You'll move on. It says, and they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And with that, with us, whoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses, in all things, so were we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. And whosoever he be that does not that does rebel against thy commandment, or will, and will not hearken unto the words, unto thy words, in all that thou commandest to him, he shall be put to death with stamp rebellion out of the army. And then it says, only, only, only be strong and of a good courage. G, go. Go on. Go up. Go out. Go in. Go over. Go ahead. Go through. Keep going. I say keep going until you reach the goal. I will go. What are you there? I will go. Stand up and tell the Lord, I will go. I will go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. You go, you go on, you go up, you go out, you go in, you go over, you go ahead, you go through. You keep going until you reach the goals. Here are the seven, seven principles and seven habits they're giving unto us. And it is for us to walk on. It's for us to say, yes, I will go. Yes, I will go. I accept. I accept. I believe. I believe. I'm going to confront those things. I'm going to demonstrate dedication to duty. And I'm going to embrace the entirety of the watch of God. And I'm going to keep on until I finish. And then I keep going. Nothing will stop you. You will succeed.